Back to my Magic 7 for Blood and Honor. And, um, I forgot to say about a few things that I really like about this game in the previous episode. And that is, you just saw the, um, intro. It is so cool to see that the person announcing the scavenger hunt is an archmage. The party that's uh, looking for the, uh, Items in the scavenger hunt are a uh, grand elf, a regular mage, and a dwarf. And you have a red dragon. When I saw this game, it was so amazing to me because all of this, like all of the um, models and everything, they're taken directly from Heroes Mind Magic 3. And that is so cool. Also because Heroes Mind Magic 3 was the first game that I owned, so when I started playing this game, I was like, wow, I'm actually transported into the world of Heroes Mind Magic 3. That is amazing. And speaking of which, that's another thing that I really like about this game as opposed to the previous game. The art style. The art style is so great. You can see that the... Um, Porters themselves are all CGI. They're really beautiful CGI. They're fitting in very well with the whole um, backstory of the game, the setting itself. The paper dolls are really nice. They're also in the same style, so they're just using the same CGI portraits um, and the CGI models here. There's a lot of things that come directly from Heroes of Magic 3, they just reuse the models, which is super nice. And everything is consistent, because even for your hirelings, they use CGI models. No more discrepancies between seeing 3D models outside and seeing pictures inside. That's really good. I really like this. And that was a really big difference between this game and the previous game, where the previous game I thought was really a huge mishmash of different styles I didn't like at all. So, yeah. And another thing that is amazing in this game, and the reason why I really like it so much more than the previous game, look at this. See? There's a fist! There's a fist! What does that mean? That means I can walk in turn-based mode. Amazing! This is a huge game-changer. Finally, I can play my magic games in turn-based mode again, without being stuck to a, the same place. Ah, this game is so good. <laughs> And we have Lady Margaret, which is not this person. This person is just saying good luck in the contest. Um, also, we have Margaret, the Dawson. Wait, is she Lady Margaret? Maybe she is Lady Margaret. What would you like to know? Greetings. Welcome to Emerald Island. I'll be your Dawson for your stay on the island. It is my duty to see that you understand the rules of both the island and the contest. For the duration of your stay on Emerald Island, please refrain from gross violations of civilized behavior. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Ducat might have a different opinions about that. <laughs> it's great how he just winks to us. <laughs> um, I mean, it is all a matter of how you put civilized behavior, right? Emerald Island. Emerald Island is southeast of Arathia and far away from pirates and other ruffians. It would be ideal, if not for the constant swarms of dragonflies and infest the island. Fortunately, the large number of armed and skilled people this contest has attracted should thin their numbers a bit. Lord Markham has supplemented the normally sparse village with a weapon, armor, and alchemist shop for your convenience during the contest. A temple and basic magical guilds are also available. I would suggest making sure that you are completely ready before you start off on the contest. So what's the contest? The rules of the contest are simple. The first person to return with the items is the winner. All you need to do is collect a wealthy hat, a red potion, a longbow, a seashell, a musical instrument, and a floor tile from the Temple of the Moon, 
and bring them to the judge to win. Okay, sounds dual. And there's also a tour. You have decided to listen to my tour about the points of interest in Emerald Island. If you decide that you no longer want me to point out areas of interest, then select tour off. Yes, so, another thing that is new in this game compared to the previous games. It has a tutorial! This is a tutorial island. And, uh, I like it. It's an interesting idea. It's uh, a bit high on wordiness at the beginning of the game, but, uh, hey, it's nice to read even more text. And before we do much of anything, let's just check our inventory. So, aside from saying that I really like the new style of uh, um, paper dolls, I also have to point out that this game is not very fair with the choices in clothing between males and females. Thankfully, the next game fixes that problem. Um, anyway, let's uh, put on the equipment that we have. Leather equipment... Gauntlets, that's uh, quite unusual for a monk. Have a brass ring. I need to sell that. And here's an interesting thing about the staff. So, as you remember, monks have an arm. They also have staff. So, let's see. With a staff, we get more to damage. Not more to attack, though. And if we look at the time, recovery time is 69. Now it's 109, so... Uh, um, hmm. This is about twice as much damage, right? But 69 versus 109. We get two chances of hitting if we don't have this, and we get less if we do. It's a hard choice, really. Hmm. Well, since we have it, I guess I might as well use it. Then, look at all this equipment for Worf. It's also interesting that sometimes... Oh yeah, we have minus 3 attack. 113 and 103, so actually we are faster with a sword than fighting unarmed. That's funny. And now we're... our attack is not so bad, but it's still pretty bad because our accuracy is so low. <laughs> have a pearl ring. I also have a wooden buckler that will lower our recovery time a bit, but it's uh, fine for armor class. Actually, the armor class is pretty good for the monk in comparison. Huh. And others have much less armor class. Well, Kai Win is also very interesting with the mace. So, her attack is plus 6, recovery time 100, damage is 1. If we use the mace, it is uh, 1 to 5, and indeed, recovery time is 80, so she is much faster with a mace than unarmed. Oh, also, before I do things, um, these are all new items, so let's just read their descriptions. Leather armor. Leather armor is the lightest and most easily worn armor, but it offers less protection than the heavier armors. Uh, the leather in this suit was improperly cured and still stinks of the chemicals used in its production. Ugh. <laughs> staff. The staff is the common weapon of the oppressed. <laughs> okay. Leather boots. These boots are made of soft leather for a more comfortable fit, but they offer little protection in combat. Low quality iron gauntlets with cloth linings to prevent blisters. Yeah, we have pretty poor equipment, but it's equipment. Crude longsword. Though notched and dented, this longsword is still an effective weapon? Crossbow. It's an interesting way of showing a crossbow. I don't see the central crosspiece. Huh. Though crossbows have many advantages, locking string catches, superior shot strength, easy to learn, they don't compare to the longbow when speed and range are critical. Um, speed true range? I'm pretty sure crossbows have pretty good range. <laughs> Wooden buckler, a small wood buckler designed to protect against arrows without encumbering its wielder. The quality is amateurish, but it's in good condition and will serve its purpose. Thanks. 
Alright, we also have books of learning. And rings that we cannot use. I can't wait to use this. I can't wait to use this. I learned it. And Ducat. He also gets the stuff. How does this affect? 94. 94! So it's free, yay. I've learned it. I've learned it. I've learned it. And a breast ring. We have plenty of rings to sell, and uh, we are missing quite a bit of uh, equipment. But uh, yeah, we also have 200 gold, which is hilariously little. Welcome aboard! Lady Margaret, William Darvies. Ahoy, matey! I be William Darvies, captain of this vessel. Sorry, mates, this vessel's moored until a winner has been declared in the contest. Of course, we can't let you get outside of the tutorial island. Sheesh. <laughs> Alright, so let's actually uh, go inside. Welcome to Emerald Island. I will be your guide during your stay here. From time to time I will appear to tell you about something you're about to see to help you understand your new world. If you tire of my messages, I won't be offended if you do, just click on my portrait to talk to me, then click on tour off to silence me. Also, Dosen is a kind of teacher, at least here, so that's interesting. Also, campfires, they give food. And just like New Sorbigal, we have Welcome to Emerald Isle. It's actually written in letters. Welcome to Emerald Isle. <laughs> and it also says here. Alright, well, we have people to talk to. So that's also quite important. Oh yeah, also there's a shack. Hi. Adam the Trader. Sometimes people have trouble bargaining in their own behalf. I'll be happy to give you advice to better the prices you receive while bargaining with merchants. All I ask is 100 gold to start and 1% of all the gold we find. That's not Bad. Four point bonus to merchant skill for all characters. It's not that expensive. Hmm. This is good to uh, keep in mind. Mia Lucille, home. Greetings, I'm Mia. Do you need something? Dragonflies. Well, dragonflies have infested the northwestern side of Emerald Island recently, making it dangerous to store things in our shadow there. Dragonflies aren't terribly powerful, but they're fast and can even occasionally shoot fire at you. Don't take them too lightly. Dragon. The dragon of Emerald Island lives in a cave in the northeast. I wouldn't go there, though. He doesn't like visitors. He spares our town so that we may pay him tribute. In return, he keeps pirates and undesirables out. So there is a dragon. Greetings. Amanda the Alchemist. I can mend any broken magic item you have, unless it's a piece of armor or a weapon. My rate is 400 gold start, plus 4% of all the gold we find. No thanks. Hey, we have barrels. Greetings. And Elisa the Bard. Hello, my name is Elisa. I'm the Bard in charge of overseeing the entertainment on Emerald Island for the duration of the scavenger hunt. Scavenger hunt. Are you contestants in Lord Markham's scavenger hunt? How neat! I'm here to provide entertainment to Lord Markham's entourage, the contestants, and to anyone else that would like to hear a song. Instruments. I own a few instruments, but I only brought my lute with me. It's old and not quite as well kept as some of the others, but I didn't want one of my good instruments stolen by pirates or damaged from exposure to human salty air. Lute. You say you need an instrument for the scavenger hunt? I suppose you could buy my lute, but I've had it for such a long time. I guess I'd part with it for 500 gold. Interested? It would help if you had the 500 gold pieces. Please don't try and cheat me out of my instrument. <laughs> also, there's kegs. And we have the different places. The door to the west leads to the local tavern. The tavern is a safe place to sleep at night and to buy food so you can sleep outdoors. You can often meet interesting people in taverns, or catch the local gossip if you're looking for something to do. In the tavern, just click on the front door. Come in, come in! Two Palms Tavern. We have nine food, so... They don't say no. 
they just uh, shake their heads. And we have skills. Stealing, disarm, trap, perception. Stealing is a new skill, and apparently monks can learn that. Um, it's not very useful, I never really use it, but it's good to know that it's there. Also, disarm trap is important, and I believe that Cisco should learn that, but... No money, no service. Yep. Then... This well has a magical benefit. It bestows a powerful fire resistance spell on the drinker. To have a character drink from the well, just select the character you want to have drink, then click on the well. There are many wells like this one in the game. You can look in your auto notes book under the fountain tab for a list of all wells you've tried drinking from during the course of the game. The effects of this particular well last until you rest. Remember that different wells may have completely different effects. But yeah, another thing that I just wanted to mention before I forget. The music! The music in this game is so good! It's even better than the previous game, and in the previous game it was already very good. <laughs> Fire resistance temporary plus 50, that's a lot. So we have 55 fire resistance, and indeed, we know now that it's there. We also have quests. It looks very Byzantine. Return Red Potion to the Judge on Emerald Island, Seashell, Longbow, Floor Tile, Musical Instrument, and Wealthy Hat. Um, Greetings! Nikki, the Trader. Okay, so you're also a trader. 100 gold, yeah. Before we start doing anything, this might be a very good thing to have. But let's look at other people. Good luck in the contest. Some people are not very useful. Um, the shop you are near is the blacksmith shop. The blacksmith only sells weapons, but this one sells many different kinds of weapons, and some of them have magical properties. You can also sell weapons here, but you won't get a good deal until you have a higher merchant skill. Need a new weapon? The Knight's Blade. And this is very important. We won this. That costs more than you have. But yeah, that. And we have an anvil here. It's an anvil. This shop is the armor shop. The armor only sells helms, shields, and armor. You will buy nearly anything you can wear if you don't want to make a separate stop at the magic shop. Remember that a character needs skill in leather, chain, or plate armor to be able to wear that kind of armor or shield skill to use a shield. Yes. Um, this is refreshing. Good luck in the contest. Good luck in the contest. And, quite importantly, here is the Widow Sweep Berries. Magical reagent of unusual properties. Widow Weep's berries can be used to make red potions. Oh, we need that. You are standing in front of the house in which Lord Markham has set up his temporary headquarters on Emerald Island. Lord Markham is the benefactor behind the scavenger hunt you are no doubt eager to win. The contest the judge is also inside. And he is the one you need to talk to in order to turn in hunt items you have found. His Grace, Lord Markham, Duke of the Western Lowlands. Lord Markham. I am Lord Markham, the benefactor providing the castle that is the prize of this contest. Castle Harmondale. If you win, you'll be in charge of one of the most scenic areas in all Larathia. Harmondale is just outside of the Telerian Forest, right on the edge of the elf human border. I'm sure you'll love the castle. It's a bit of a fixer-upper, but it's quite roomy and has excellent ventilation. It breaks my heart to part with this property, but I feel that the time has come for me to give something back to the people. Hmm, that sounds nice. So if we win, we get a castle. I really like this aspect of the game, actually, because... When you think about when this game was released, um... That was way before player-owned houses or player fortresses have become a thing. And we have it in this game. That's cool. <laughs> the hunt. Isn't this hunt exciting? I'm really ungrateful you came to my little event. I hope you have fun, even if you don't win. I think it's great that everyone is competing in a spirit of good sportsmanship and cam camaraderie. Missing contestants. 
Keep in mind, I have a 1000 gold reward for the group to bring back information on the contestants that have disappeared. Okay, important to know that. Thomas the Judge. Greetings, my name is Thomas. I'm the judge of the contest. Rules of the hunt. Good afternoon. My duty is to verify that you have all the items necessary to win the contest. You are required to bring a red potion, a longbow, a floor tile from the Temple of the Moon, a wealthy hat, seashell, and an instrument to me. You can bring them in any order, just show them to me one at a time so I may verify them. What do you have? I'm sorry, but nothing you have is necessary for the hunt. I don't mean to belittle what you have, but I'm not looking for any of it. Okay. So, first things first. I want to get hirelings before we start doing anything. So, we have talked already to these people. Let's continue talking to more people. Hello! Dolores the Tinker, you've seen better days. I know a thing of two about fixing tools and whatnot. I also know about locks. I can help you pick them if you hire me for 200 gold to start and 2% of the gold we find. I'm starting to trap. That's not useful. At the moment. But here we have a guard who is a swordsman. Amazing. Oh yeah, we also just got a new quest. And the quest to find the missing contestants on Emerald Island and bring back proof to Lord Markham. This building is another private residence. Roger, the builder, the owner of the house, sells membership in the Spirit and Body Magic guilds here. The price is low, but you must pay if you intend to take advantage of the guild services, including spell purchases and skill teaching. By the way, if you're getting tired of my messages, you can stop them. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Roger Telmar. I'm Roger, and I sell guild, guild memberships for the Body and Spirit guilds on Emerald Island. 50 gold. It's not so expensive, but we are kind of low on gold, so no, not yet. And then we also have... This building is Carolyn Weather's private residence. Carolyn makes a living by procuring magic guild memberships and aspiring wizards... Two aspiring wizards and other spellcasters. She'll be happy to sell membership with the local air and fire guilds for a small fee. You don't have to buy membership in a guild if you don't want to. Remember that you must be a guild member to buy spells and learn skills in magic guild. Yes. Air and fire. Hello, I'm Carolyn. I handle the guild memberships for fire and air guilds here on the island. I don't really uh, care so much at the moment. This door leads to the training center of Emerald Island. If you have enough experience points, gained from killing monsters and completing quests, you can come here to increase your character's levels. When you gain a level, you also get some skill points to spend on improving your skills. Only spend skill points on skills that your character knows. Learn new skills, try visiting the businesses around town, and see if they offer lessons in anything you're interested in. Yes. Need some training? We can learn Armor Master and Bodybuilder. Good luck in the contest. Hello! Teresa the Smith. I'll happily join you for 200 gold and 2% of all the gold we find. Fix any weapon you ask me to while I work for you. No. And here we have the guilds. Also, good luck in the contest. The Spirit Guild can be found through the door to the east. You must have a membership to use the services of the guild, which includes spell purchase and skill teaching. To, begin, to become a Spirit Guild member, you must first visit Roger in his house a little way southeast of here and purchase a membership. Also remember, a character who wishes to learn a spirit spell must have the spirit magic skill. Members only. Members only. Looks like it's uh, nice and warm and cozy in here. The air guild is on the other side of this door. You must have a membership to use the services of the guild, which includes spell purges and skill teaching. To become an air guild member, you must find uh, Carolyn in her house a little way southeast of here and purchase a membership. Members only. Ooh, swirling air. Hello? Mr. Malwick. Psst, come here. I have an offer for you. Harmondale. We have reason to believe that whoever is in charge of Harmondale in the next few months will have an unprecedented opportunity to shape the future. That is why I'm here today, to make sure the shape of the future is pleasing to my associates. 
I'm sure you understand. Proposal. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mr. Malwick. I represent a group of, shall we say, investors in the future. I have been observing you since you arrived on this island, and I believe your values and goals have much in common with ours. I am empowered to grant you a fireball wand to help you win the hunt today, in exchange for a favor in the future. What do you say? This is very interesting and another thing that I really like this game. If you accept the wand, you get a wand for unknown shady things that will happen in the future. If you decline the wand, then you don't get this extra wand, but nothing bad will happen in the future. For now, let's not do that and think about this for a bit. I respect your decision. I am, however, a patient man, and will offer you this chance until a winner in the contest is proclaimed. This building is where you will find the town alchemist. The alchemist sells potions and potions ingredients. There's also a place where your characters may learn the alchemy skill. You must have alchemy skill to make even the most basic of potions. You can do that by opening your character's inventory, picking up a potion ingredient, and right-clicking on it in an empty potion bottle. Use a similar procedure to mix two potions together. Alchemists know that certain mixtures produce certain results, but it's a trade secret. You'll have to figure it out for yourself. Be warned that some mixtures are explosive. Hi, how are you? It's, uh, yeah, quite a shabby place. But they have potion bottles! Look at all these potion bottles! Amazing! And, ah, an excellent choice. This potion bottle is of the finest quality. I'm willing to virtually give it away for two gold. Yes. Also, mushrooms, obsidian, widow sweet berries. So if we buy a potion bottle, then we can make a red potion, which we need, but let's not do that yet. We can also learn about identify monster and, yes, alchemy. This will be very useful, too. You don't have enough gold. Yes, unfortunately we don't. Hey, another potion bottle, amazing. Awaken, cure wounds, cure disease, cure poison, and other cure wounds. For one, I really like the design of the potion in this game. It's really nice. And look at all these different types of potions. They're much better than in the previous game. Some of them are still the same, cure disease and cure wounds. Um, and yeah, cure poison as well. But now we also have an Awakened Potion, which is very interesting, and you can also see that each of these has a different power. So Cure Wounds has power of 6, so it's it heals 10 plus the potion's strength hit points. So we no longer have this issue where at some point red potions are no longer useful, because they get better as your skill in alchemy becomes better. We also have recipes, so if we want to learn how to make a particular type of potion, it's no longer just uh, trial and error, we can read it by buying recipes. And we can also see what we can get. Shocking potion, stone to flesh, pure intellect, leg boost, and so on. Some of them are completely useless if we don't have an alchemy skill, because like pure intellect is a black potion, or white potion in this game, I think. And we cannot make those, unfortunately. But that also makes it very interesting that uh, now we should check shops more often, because black potions might be on sale. And that is really good. So, alchemist shops are really useful in this game. Greetings! Jan is the psychic. Fortune is my business, and I can improve your fortunes for 400 gold to start, and 4% of the gold we find. Luck? Really? Yes, um, no. <laughs> this door leads to the Body Guild. You must have a membership to use the services of the Guild. Include skill purchase and skill teaching. If you're a Body Guild member, you must first visit Roger in his house. It will way southeast of here. It is a membership. Also remember, a scholarship who wishes to learn a body spell must have the body magic skill. Members only. Members only. And in the center is the body. And there's a well. Luck permanent. That's one reason why you don't necessarily need to have a lot of luck at the beginning. 
but it only works for two times, and then it becomes refreshing. Oh, oops, not this. I want to save. And then... Hello. Nancy the teacher. I can help you interpret and understand what you see as you travel. I think my advice will increase your overall experience. I must charge 300 gold to start and 3% of the gold will be fine for my services, however. 10% bonus on all experience learned. This is very useful. I don't have the gold. I don't have enough gold. I don't have the gold. I don't have enough to pay. We need more gold. Hail! Aristides the Enchanter. Dangerous sorcerers abound throughout the land of Rathia. Most use spells that do some sort of elemental damage, like fire or lightning. Others use body or mind magic to assault their foes. I know a spell that will help protect you from these, and I can keep it going all the time. I'll cast it for you if you take me along. All I want is 1,000 gold to start and 10% of the gold we find. Protection from air, fire, water, body, and mind by 20 constantly. Not bad. This building is where you may find the Fire Guild. You must have membership to use the services of the Guild, which includes spell purchase and school teaching. To become a Fire Guild member, you must visit Carolyn in her house. You must remember a character who wishes to learn a Fire Spell and have a Fire Magic skill. Yes. Members only. Very fiery. And the fire looks very nice. Hail! Sherry the Scout. My eyes are sharp and my voice is loud. I can alert you to danger before it strikes. It may save your life. All I need is 300 gold to start and 3% of the gold we find. It's my bonus to perception skill. Hmm. Not bad. Also, we have new thing pedestals. This is a pedestal of haste. If you touch this, you will get the effect of this spell. Which is really nice, but... Haste is not something you want to have because you will become weak. Okay, but from Greetings. what we have, let's see, I think... Hey, there's another guard. Peasant... That's Mr. Malwick. Hey, another thing that we should be doing... Exploring around a bit... Um, ah, yes, there it is. There's a chest! And now we have some gold. Also, wizard dice scroll. Wooden buckler. That uh, might be useful. Dwarven dagger. Oh, we haven't read of this. More like a short sword to a dwarf, this dagger is an excellent example of superior dwarven engineering and inferior artistic creativity. <laughs> Crude bow, a simple longbow constructed of common materials and uninspired design. Or is this chimney sweep? Peasant, peasant, Teresa the Smith, peasant. So all peasants just wish us good luck in the contest. Man of the Alchemist. Greetings. Yes. Well, let's take a traitor. Hi. Don't betray us. But you're hired. Yes. This is quite well worth the uh, gold. And I don't think I want to have two traitors. And for the rest, I... Uh, the teacher is not bad, but I might as well wait a bit and see if we can find uh, better options. But that will be all for now, and uh, next time we will get more equipment and uh, hopefully explore the island a bit more. So see you then, later.